Hey everyone, Kyle here. So, bringing you another best of three today with more of uh, my friends from the community. With me today is Amy, also known as Ardent Dawn, and the founder of Turn One Mystic, which is going to be uh, a great website for the community that we're I'm going to be you know trying to help out with as well. Um, it's going to be October 17th. It goes live, so make sure you get ready to bookmark that because we're going to have amazing content going up, and I'm sure writing from you, right, Amy? Yeah, definitely. I've got about three months of content lined up for the time being, and I'm planning to do a weekly launch of my content probably each Monday. So I'm going to have plenty of content. I'm not going to run out. And from Christmas onwards, I'm going to start producing new content, putting it up every week. So I know I have at least as much to go straight until Monday. We'll see from there, but I expect it to continue all the way through the year. I'm definitely excited about it. I'm looking forward to reading some oh, of the yeah. stuff as well, just because it's always better <laughs> yeah. to learn more, of course. Yeah. Well, you've had a few previews, haven't you? I have, that's true. Oh, definitely looking forward to it all. So... All right, fantastic. So we go ahead and... Uh, let's go ahead and get... Uh, oops, sorry. I, uh, all of a sudden, as soon as I'm recording, people on uh, my friends list are just blowing me up with messages. <laughs> oh, naturally. <laughs> uh, oh, I'll dear. go ahead and send the challenge here, and we can okay. get this started. Right. I, I gotta this. admit, I'm I'm uh, fairly nervous. I was nervous for the <laughs> for the Shades of Time one just because I'd heard of how like good he was. But since you just want to interact with the daily, uh, mm. I'm even more. I feel like the pressure is even more on. Yeah. Now the question Let's is: see. Do do I go try hard and play uh, Zirix, or do I go for Argy and mess around a bit more? I'm um, thinking Argy. You know what's funny? I'm literally looking at my decks, and I was thinking, thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> Whatever you uh, play with, I'll break it out. See. Hmm. Or do I just, or just throw in a? Uh, do I go for the <laughs> wild card and click on Ferrari here? Go for the Ferrari, mate. Well, right. I haven't actually seen it yet in game. Oh, I I did a. Um, it might. It's probably a little too long. I should have made two separate videos, but I did a fifty-three mm -hmm. minute long comprehensive tutorial Ooh. on how to play this on ladder. Ah yes, and it was definitely need to watch that. Really, Ooh. really fun. Okay, this hand's cool. I'm not sure what I want to do with it. Probably. One of the hardest decisions in this deck is if you have a flash incarnate and a bunch of really good things to flash out on turn <laughs> one, it's what to flash. Oh yeah. <laughs> Right. I'm just getting my uh, deck tracker out of the way. There we go. Hmm. Let's try this. You're okay. As I say, considering the, the the next Ferrari Magma, I'm tempted to keep track of how many spirits you can put onto the board each turn. <laughs> uh, let's 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 try something a little crazy. Oh dear. On a scale to, of one to Flash Cron, it's a Flash Cron. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, luckily for you though, he has to take two damage, so he is just a four four. Boop. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is a that's a bit of a problem. That is a bit of a problem. It's also a bit of a solution. Now let's see, what do I replace here? Cause I know that I'm playing the Regalia, no questions. Mm -hmm. Um I think I'd rather replace this one. I had just had to have that moment. No, that is uh, on a scale of, of 1 to Arclight Regalia. <laughs> that was an Arclight Regalia. That is a full 1.5 Regalia. <laughs> oh, right, man. stick it there where your general can't reach it. And I'm not too fussed if your provoked minion can reach it and say go. Now, let's see here. Please no die I frenzy me. Um, I do not believe I will be doing that. Okay. That's fair enough. 
So hopefully keep that out of the way for a while. Now, yeah, this, isn't, this also isn't a great setup for holy emulation, but I, I'm trying to grab that, you know, I'm trying to keep you from getting even more mana. Well, I'm going to replace this. And I'm going to probably go for one of my favorite plays in the deck. Actually, hmm. Yeah, those lions with uh with roar are so good. Hmm. Yeah, just considering my moves. I'll go for this. No, we all need to move it, but also why not? Oh, there's another one. And generally try to avoid any AoE. That'll do. I still haven't got exactly a feel for what the new turn timer's like, because it always cuts a few seconds short at the moment. Yeah. Hopefully they're going to fix that soon. Now the question here is, which one's the bigger threat? Mm. Uh, celerity does have potential to do a lot of damage. Windblade Adept, though, 4-3 guaranteed. It is definitely a hard decision which one to hit, I think. I mean, you won't have Roar, so I won't have to, I won't have to worry about Celerity Roar. And I guess if you do hit me with either one of them, they would die to my hero power, as it stands, mm. unless I get Light Bendered or something. Um, mm. So I think... I think I hit this one. Okay. Your ends okay. Alright, I like my options here. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely have to say Azurite Lion is one of my favorite two drops. And I'm going to play around the Mechanta, even though it's a bit annoying to do so. No, no, you don't need to play around it, you know? <laughs> uh, I'm not going to take that <laughs> risk. Also, you were correct in killing the one you did. And... Oh. Yeah. That's a scary minion. It is, and it draws me a card, so I'm not even worried if it gets removed. Well, I, you know what I mean. Yeah. I'm not losing huge amounts of advantage if it gets removed. Let us see here. The main thing is, you're yeah. not really having yeah, a you great can way of dealing with it away if you punch it. Yeah, but that requires that you punch it. Hmm. Ooh. This isn't an amazing turn for me. I'm gonna have to just take a big risk here. To get him? Okay. Uh, yeah, not a. Uh, that turn did not feel good. <laughs> I didn't feel like I had any way to deal with that at all. Um. Let's see. Not even egg morph, man. Hmm. Ooh, how does that add up? Afterblaze is a very solid card. Indeed, oh. it is. There goes a bit of my plan. And 
How low am I willing to put myself against you? Probably don't want to attack here. You're good. Now let's see. Let's roll the dice here. And... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is a distinct lack of enthusiasm. Oh, jeez. Um, yeah. Not great. Yeah, I just didn't see the need to put myself into any potential burst damage range here. Yeah, no, for sure. Just one of those situations where my best play is sadly going to be a just just a cron with nothing just hoping for the provoke yeah it's it's one of those cycle into cron moments yeah oh yeah that happens the only but the only moment where cron's actually bad well yeah. he's not even bad he's a four six provoke at worst case that is true but this is why i didn't feel the need to attack into you oh yeah there you go round one gg that is straight gg yeah uh turn to regalia that's so good. Strong. All right, all right. Well, let's see. I, now I'm now I'm even more pressure. I gotta make this next one count. <laughs> yep, you do. That's the one thing I've always felt odd about uh, rematches and best of threes in Duelist. It mm -hmm. doesn't alternate which side of the board you're on because it randomizes it each time. That's true. Yeah. Which, coming from Magic, where it's the person who loses chooses whether they go first or second, mm -hmm. makes quite a big difference. Yeah, at least it seems to okay. have rotated us by itself. Yeah, happens to have done. Okay, so what do that do, I think? Um, not honestly worried about using that, so let's see. Um, okay, yeah, I'll take it. Cracking up knuckles intensifies. Let's see. Okay. Alright. This hand is not too bad this time. You'll note that I am not replacing. Yes. Which is um, a bit worrisome. <laughs> yeah. Putting it out of range of any potential uh, Falkius plays. Because, I mean, something's going to get Falkius regardless. But it means you can't do something like Falkius onto the Mana Spring, First Wish, the Primus Fist, blow up my entire board, which I really do not want to play into. Sadly, I... I am stuck I mean, you with... might not. But that, that it's a perfectly realistic play. I think, I mean... Pretty much every Petrupian deck runs three First Wish, three Falcius these days, mm -hmm. I think. I'd be extremely surprised if they didn't. It's so just like, I do not need to play into that option by putting the uh, uh, the Lion one step further forwards. Too much blowout potential. It's more coming down to a debate now of what I replace. Mm. And I think it's this one. And that's not any better, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel such sorrow for you. It's okay. <laughs> oh. Glad to see it. Alright, this, uh... <laughs> First wish? Second wish? <laughs> second wish. Okay. And I think I'm, I need to get this some cycle going on here, so I'm gonna have to go for the full... the full gambit and try to get something for next turn. Alright. This isn't garbage anymore, but... we'll see. Mm, I can still trade into it, so the worst case scenario isn't that bad. Yeah. Let's see about best case scenario. Eh. That's decent. Ooh, this decision's tough. I'm going to take a bit of a risk, because I don't think you have many good ways of punishing me for it. Uh oh. Let's see what happens. Hmm. 
I mean, there is obvious good ways of punishing me for it. But I feel lucky. Also, mainly because I don't want to trade off the Azerite line given the choice. Mm -hmm. So I'm willing to take the risk of you having a dispel for the Iron Cliff Guardian. I mean, the obvious play here would be Falcus onto the Mana Spring, and then we'll shroud the Iron Cliff Guardian. Which would suck slightly, but I would live. And here I am with a uh, a way to deal with it, but not quite a way to make it happen. You've got um, a Tropic Decay, haven't you? Well, oh. you don't need to be Oh, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, put it this way, I played around the Entropic Decay. Yeah, you did, that's for sure. I was considering putting it right in the top corner, as in top right of the Primer, so that it could then walk onto the Mana Spring. Mm -hmm. But if you want to take the Mana Spring, you'll just put something straight onto it anyway, so... That's true, I'd yeah. kind of rather have it closer to your general for when I want to bring it in, and having it in the corner doesn't seem like it has enough payoff. The question also then comes in, do I, do I at least smack it for five? Hmm. Yeah, it's a good question. Ooh. Ah, okay, yeah. Alright, let's do it. And he smacks it. I'm just worried okay. about, like... I'm surprised that you're attacking into Argyon, considering that you're the uh, more defensive general. That is that is a good point. That is something that I still don't quite have a handle on, is what matchups I should be attacking into and which ones I should not be. Mm. Other than oh. when I'm fighting, like, um... Uh, the only time that I, I know not to is when I'm fighting, like, a really aggressive Fey, or when I'm fighting the... the Lionar General... The, not the Lionar General. Yeah. The, um... The hyper-aggressive Magmar one that draws you cards. I can't remember his name. Oh, yeah. oh yes. Um... Other than that, I have a hard time sometimes deciding when I should and should not attack. See, this is a very awkward turn for me. Because the, my better option isn't a good use of my mana. But, um... Guess the place. <laughs> of course. Right. Oh. And bring him up. Do I want to attack? Yeah, I probably do. There you go. You can clear with Falcius, but I want to get the face damage onto you because I know that I don't want to let you stall. Yeah, and I also... I'm just going to go out and say that I do not have Falcius in my hand. Mm-hmm. Although you haven't replaced yet, so yeah. still need to play around to even know it, but... Ugh. <sighs> Jeez. Yeah, uh, what's it called? After Blaze is such a good card. Yeah, it is. I was debating holding onto it and trying to get value out by putting it onto a, uh, what's it called, a Zeal minion. Mm -hmm. But if you're trying to get value against Vitruvian, you lose because they have the superior late game. So you have to push the face damage. I'm thinking. I'm thinking you're going to. Uh, this is looking pretty, pretty not good for me in this best of three because my my best plays are going to be pretty bad. At <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now please tell me it spawns somewhere where I can hit it. And yep, sweet. That makes life simpler. Yeah, I'm gonna have to fire this Iron Dervish. He uh, doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> For breach of contract. Yeah, no, he's not. Uh, he's not helping out. Um, difficult choice for next turn. It's basically: do I play, do the curve play, or do I play the powerful stuff? Oh. Powerful stuff for this turn. Uh, I think going with the curve play wouldn't be the best in this situation, and it paid off. 
I'm actually going to bring that up because I'd like to have something to roar if you clear the 4-6, so I'm not going to hit you with it yet. I can use it as a 4-2 removal. Enter. Very solid. And, looking at my options here... Let's it's off. too early for you to use uh, the theft card, Dominic Will. Yeah. This is... This, geez. <laughs> <laughs> so looking at you can roar this so I'm looking at six, yeah, at you, least 6 guaranteed damage which is pretty bad yeah I um, mean if you dispel and you don't prevent them from hitting you you take 8 damage and die Yeah, which is why I wasn't too worried about trying to get into 2 damage with the rush minion because roar onto Kron plus my general still kills you mm -hmm. you can provoke of course you've got Amara healer as an option on 6 mana yeah, sadly, my best play does seem to be just to provoke Kron to try to keep to try to keep her damage down to six. But I feel like that's not going to be a huge like it's going to end up. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, you have four cards in hand, so I feel like you can um, dig up two forgive damage. Me for forgive me for having a little bit of fun. Oh, no, well, this is totally fine. Let's see what we get. Well, what I get is lethal. Well, you got a cycle, though. There we go. Yeah, I just want to see what you got out of it. There you yeah. go. Yeah. A flying Provoke. and a shield. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. GG. Yeah, definitely. I I definitely I learned note, a lot. Actually, I was, I was going to say, that if you hadn't attacked my general, you wouldn't have died that turn. Mm -hmm. However, I did have war. If I needed to have war, I just wouldn't have played the Kron. Yeah, that is true. But um, yeah, I'd definitely say... You want to be very cautious about trading face damage with generals mm -hmm. when you're playing a late game faction like Vitruvian. Yeah, that that makes sense. Um, it's something that I really put a lot of thought into, but I'll. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I guess. Do I'm I have still... a third? Yeah, we have we have a a funzy match. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. But like listening to your reasoning behind stuff when you were talking really helped mm -hmm. me as a player yeah. as well because it's just. You, you think on a different level of duelist than I have. So. Yeah. Um, just so you know, when I was talking about the curve play versus the value play, mm -hmm. what I had in my hand was, it was six mana this turn, seven mana next turn, and I had Kron, Kron, deal to Silverguard Knight. Oh, I see. So I had the option of going Kron this, I definitely wanted to Kron this turn, because I wanted to get the value going on the board. Mm -hmm. And it was, which card do I replace for my hand? Do I replace Kron at the second Kron and plan to play the Altars plus Silver God Knight next turn to push through more damage? Or do I replace the Dealtus try planning to play Kron next turn plus War plus something else with the War potentially going on to whatever minion I spawn? Yeah. And I don't think there was a very clear play against that, but it might have been retrospectively better. Because I was thinking, if he removes the first Kron, if he's got something like um, the Decay for it, it means I can get a second Kron onto the board. But thinking back on that, a second Kron onto the board would have been worse because it would have played into uh, Dominate Will, where I was only putting a single card out. So I know we said that our next video that we want to do together is going to be a full replay analysis of these three games. Mm -hmm. But just sort of bringing up something now, so I can remember to bring it up again later, Definitely. I think that rather pl than planning to play Kron that turn, I should have planned to play Dealtus plus Silverguard Knight. And what I could have done is put the Dealtus on one side of your general, the Silverguard Knight on the opposite side of, my general, on, of your general, so that even if you use Dominate Will and stall my Provoke Minion, I'd still have a minion on the other side that could attack you for lethal. Yeah. And I would have generally been spreading out my investment a lot more. So that's definitely something to go through whenever we record the next one. Yeah, no, that's very true. That's very true. I don't that would have been a very a tight spot for me on seven mana. Hmm. Incidentally, I'm interested to find out what cards you did have in hand later down the line. Okay, get rid of that. I kinda like the rest. Um, do I want that against you? Probably. Let's try this. 
No. Ah, well. Replace that. Stick down adept, nothing surprising. And in this situation, I think because you, ha, huh. this one's a little bit tough because I, no, no spoilers, it's going down this turn. I've got Azerite line in hand and I'm thinking about, do I play around your ability to make the uh, lion, the, what's it called? The Silphar? The, the Silphar into a 3 3 using the Razor Scales. With Frenzy, yeah, right? Oh, oh, I, yeah. I, I was the King of Dire Tide. Yeah, Dire Tide as well. Yeah, thank. Definitely going to position around the potential Dire Tide then. Okay, but yeah, Dire Tide still sucks, but it's very hard to avoid at least getting some value. Otherwise, yeah. you wouldn't play in the first place, you just replace it. True. I'm going to try to go for a fun play. Just because okay. we're already already lost the best of three, so might as well just have some entertainment here. Are you going to? I think you know it's too early for you to egg morph it again. Flash con? No, flash rock. <laughs> oh, this is going to get very entertaining. We can have a cat fight now. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! Bye right, now. There's a very obvious option here, but I'm not actually sure it ends too well for me. Um, hmm. Not even sure what I want to replace. I see. I think I do this. Mm. No more free baby minions for me. No, I don't hit that. Play that there. And actually, I move that. Oh, right out of time. Okay. Time to. I forgot that the thing ends early. Okay, so your battle pet hits that. That little battle pet goes to the ephemeral shroud, which is about as much value as you could ask for. Ah, uh, yeah, I definitely wanted to move my Azerite line back, and I was about to, but I just ran out of time, which is my fault. Okay, but let's see here. So I got a few options. Um, I'm going to cycle this card, because at the moment, I don't think I have the leverage to get value out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ah, uh, I'm annoyed about the Azerite line, because I'm coming up on my war turn. That's true. That is true. And I am stuck in a position where I want to use my overload in order to keep the Ezrat Lion. But you have a four mana control. play. Exactly, but my but all my best plays are four mana, or mm. I'm it's not the best here. Yeah. I definitely know that I goofed up regardless of how well it happens to line up with the mana curve in your deck. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, and there's the timer. Okay. That raises some interesting questions. Um, definitely replacing... Uh, am I definitely replacing that? I don't even know that I am. If it's Regalia, yeah, just get rid of it. You know, that card's <laughs> <laughs> um, definitely getting rid of something here. I think... Oh, no, 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 I've got an excellent play here. 
Uh oh. Go to that. Huh. That makes things a bit trickier. I think. I still like this. That seems good enough. I hate skipping on that much mana, but that, that was one of the situations where, like you said, it was a matter of when do I use the raw or do I play a card from my hand, and I actually had to use the raw there. But I cleared board for relatively little cost. Ooh. Cron Bow Power? Uh, bow Power? Bloodborne Power? Bloodborne Spell, even. Sadly, not Cron. Right. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> you know the standard at uh, Ubo. Uh. Ooh, that is interesting. That is extremely interesting. I was debating which one I wanted to put on the spring tile, but I figured I wanted the the RAR closer to the the middle. Since Ubo can also kill the three two if it decides to, but yeah, assuming that it doesn't get uh, that buff otherwise demolished. Um, hmm, tough decision, but you. Can't. If I put Kron down, Ra can't get to it. That is true. Replace that. Range minion, even. Ow. Damn. Um, McCant is coming. Potentially. But if I move that, it actually gets worse for McCanter. I think I do go face because I want to be aggressive even given the amount of burst damage you have and go Ra attacks me bird attacks Kron oh the force field one that's horrible well, to be fair, it's even worse when you, you get it in Argian somehow. I've actually had moments when I've been against a ward up one of those. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I could imagine that being a problem. Roared, yeah. roared one one force field. Yeah. Okay. With now, Kron, we hardly knew any. Really. Now it comes down to placement. Do I try to do I try to place this so it's closer to the action? Or do I try to place it so that Holy Immolation isn't as strong? Let's see. I mean, if I place it here, it can still kind of get over. If I place it here, Holy Immolation hits all three. If I place it here, Holy Immolation hits me and Rar. I feel like this is the best placement. Assuming mm. you have a Holy Immolation coming. And I'm looking at 11 damage if you have a Holy Immolation on me. So with that, so assuming that Holy Immolation, I'm taking 11 damage regardless, I think I have to take a risk to try to come back. So I have to just bank on the no Holy Immolation and play it closer. Because That's Holy Immolation it. regardless is a problem for me. Yeah. You are right about that, and it happens to be game. Ah, well, there we go. Because I, I have the all the face damage. And three, five, 
Yeah, I've got Lethal on board. I also have Saber Spine in hand, which I'll flash. Not flash reincarnation, show that I've got it, but yeah. Holy Immolation was lethal. GG. GG, man. Uh, you were thinking about Holy Immolation in the right terms, but I yeah. think you completely missed the fact that Give it, you just lose flat out to holy immolation. Yeah. So you have to take the well, you'd have to take the quote unquote risky play because mm -hmm. if you know that holy immolation kills you regardless, it means you can play into holy immolation as much as you like. Because if you've got it, you're dead. If they have it, you're dead anyway. Yeah. Which is always tough because you train yourself to look and say, I don't want to play in this pattern because I know it's bad against X. Like Macanto is one of the biggest examples. You always want to try and play around Macanta, but if Macanta is going to do so much damage you can't recover anyway, then sometimes you just take the risk and say, I want to have the best possible play if they don't have X card. Yeah, I really need to sit down and have a pep talk with, with this deck because I don't know why McCanter didn't even show up. I mean McCanter, come on. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even it's one of those cards it wasn't it wasn't even something I mulliganed. It, I never drew it. It just it just didn't mm. it didn't show up today. It called in sick. That's okay. That's a, um regardless. It, it a stage <laughs> yeah. Regardless though, um I definitely see uh I, I'm excited by the fact that I just lost three zero because <laughs> Because, or 0-3, I guess, technically, from my point of view. Because um, it just shows me that there's a lot more growth I can do. And mm. when people keep telling me, like, hey, you know, you're, you're really solid. Look what you can do. And that's great. I don't, mm. I don't take compliments very well. But it's like, I could be even better, you know? That that's is true. Exciting. You've got to remember, three games is still a very small sample size. And yes... Both, I mean, both of us can go back over those games and say I should have done this play better or that mm. play better. Because I told you just when we were loading into the third game about the whole playing Kron versus playing the Altus plus um, Silvergard Knight. And there's lots yes. of different plays that both of us could have made. And I think that's going to make it especially interesting when we go back. It could be tomorrow, but whenever it may happen to be. Yeah. When we go back and record the next video, which is purely going to be us doing a replay analysis of those mm -hmm. two games. And I think off screen, uh, off camera, I'd like to do some, what's it called, me spectating some of your games and just see how the deck plays out. Yeah, so that, for sure. So how, it, you know when the Humble Bundle came out? Mm -hmm. I rolled about six or seven different accounts because I just wanted to build the Kajata Flash Reincarnation Chimera deck. Oh, yeah. And I eventually got that working, and that was glorious, because I got an account with 10 legendaries and a prismatic legendary on it eventually. Oh, that's fantastic. That worked, yeah. And one of the legendaries was Chimera, so it's just like, yep, I'm not rolling any more accounts. This is the one. And it was really it was really upsetting, because playing it in low silver, I had the problem that by the time... I was ready to do a Flash Chimera play. I'd either already won the game and any card from six mana upwards would have sealed the deal, mm -hmm. or my opponent had snowballed away far too much and Chimera was just going to be far too slow, which might be because I wasn't fully embracing it as the janky meme deck that it was meant to be, <laughs> and I was replacing away Flash Reincarnations when they seemed bad, rather than just holding onto them all and waiting for a, a Chimera. Chimera. Chimera is so beautiful. My mm. first time playing Chimera, I didn't actually have the card in my deck. I was against a full RNG Magma player, and what he did was, he was running Grincher into the artifact that gives you ranged as Vath, so he was just shooting all my oh, stuff to smithereens. Wow. And he, he, he was just running all of the RNG cards in his deck, so I felt absolutely no shame when I played Reaper of the Nine Moons, he shot it, it dropped a Chimera, <laughs> the first three spawns with a 4-6, a 5-5, and a 4-6. And that I just shredded amazing. him with his own Chimera. It was amazing, yeah. I am really tempted to find a, play, a way to shove this in here. <laughs> So but not the Chimera. Well, as long as, long as you're not taking it seriously, because like I just said, it has yeah. the huge problem of 
be overkill, which I was going to lead on to saying Raz solves that because he's a five drop. You can actually get him down early enough, and you won't get the JIT games where you, he just drops Mechazor, because yeah. I have got some Mechazors when I was playing with the deck and those two of them stuff. But you can, act, if you enjoy setting up those sort of plays, which I personally do, you can actually do it competitively, or at least competitively enough to get you to whatever rank you want to aim for. Mm -hmm. I don't know what how good it would be if you want to get into top fifty, but worry about that when you get near top fifty. It's an awesome deck. Yeah, definitely. I, uh, um, the whole thing with Ferrari started out as as kind of a joke in a in voice in the voice channel with um james and stuff where i was saying man i miss i miss uh, like big abyssian and stuff when you just play <laughs> decks with tons of giant stuff yeah and i always looked at magmar and saw flash incarnate in kujata and thought if only there was a way to do it and yeah. they kept talking about how impossible it was and i said you know what i'm gonna do it and then when i just started yeah. winning like crazy i <laughs> yeah i, I started Pretty focusing fair. more on it but yeah. Part of that is always going to be the fact that when you surprise people with your picks, they haven't re they've replaced away cards that would have been good against you. Yes. They've kept cards that weren't necessarily. So, like, it, it, I don't know how good the uh, Ferrari Magmar deck is because I don't personally play Magmar enough to know. Mm -hmm. But it's always worth bearing in mind that part of it is always going to be the cards being strong. Some of it might be your opponents not playing correctly around it. Yeah, I haven't seen enough of the deck to really make any accurate comments on that. Yeah, it it uh, it's not it's not expected. Like even even Risky knew the deck, and because I kept mm. playing um, giant stuff, he didn't think about the fact that like Zenru yeah. still existed. So then, <laughs> uh... <laughs> yeah. Oh jeez. Um, I know that in the first month of Shimzar, mm -hmm. from my personal experience on the ladder, other people may report different stuff. I found a lot of people had stopped running all of the classic tech cards like Zenrui, Hollow Grove, Keeper, mm -hmm. Sunset Paragon. Not Lightbender, because Lightbender was the obvious one to keep. Yeah. But because it was a completely new meta and people were still sort of feeling out what everyone else was using, everyone was saying, right, we don't know which tech cards we're actually going to need against this meta. We'll just run the biggest cards of our own and make our opponent answer them. So I think it's now going to be getting into the stage. One second, I managed to knock out my earphones. Oh. Okay, I'm back. Yes, Excellent. it's sort of getting to the stage now where everyone's feeling out which tech cards are most relevant against the meta, and all of the old stuff like Sunset Paragon's coming back. Because oh, yeah. um, I was playing a fairly vanilla um, Vitruvian list recently, mm -hmm. and I went up against... Uh, I've, I've mentioned that, you know, with the Obelisk decks, how they feel so incredibly awful when your opponents are playing Frenzy. So the Diatide Frenzy onto the 5-3 Flyer, the Mechanical War Beast, just all of that stuff that made me stop wanting to play Obelisk. So many games where that hurt. But I went against a really cool Obelisk deck that was using Sunset Paragon and completely blew me out. Oh. And it was, he was running all the draw power because he had three Whisper of the Sand, which you want anyway, but also happens to maintain your hand size of what it was. Yeah. He was running Elkian and Spelljammer in Vitruvian. And I was really confused by that because I thought, well, you even if you're drawing loads of cards, you can only usually play one massive thing per turn. You're sort of aiming to go for the value plays, like we were mentioning way back when, mm -hmm. and just make them use multiple cards to get rid of one of yours. And that's how you generate card advantage rather than actually drawing. But he was running at least one spell jammer, at least two different Elkians, which is not surprising if you're going to run them. And it was just so incredibly painful because I had him down to two cards in hand and I had my hand full of Krons, Amara Healers, Nimbus, all what have you, few removal spells. And he just put the spell jammer where I couldn't reach it and I couldn't keep up with the card draw. I won in the end. It might actually be worth a completely different tangent. I might do a replay analysis of that game at some point. But it just caught me off guard with some of the tech cards that were coming up. But that's now what's starting to happen. And it's really quite awesome. Yeah, no, that sounds like a really cool deck. I really want to try the structure deck again. I When I mm. first came back, I threw one together 
I didn't look up any deck lists because I didn't know where to find them. Uh, mm, yeah. I would like Google Which deck lists and then I would find. Yeah, like I would go to Google and type in like duelist deck lists and I would get posts mm -hmm. from like pre Shimzar that just oh. had been upvoted a lot on like Reddit or something and so they were yeah. the first thing to pop up. Um, yeah. And it was it was fun, but because I had just come back from me gone for two months, I had no yeah. idea what was going on. <laughs> um, yeah, I can one up that because when I started the game for the first time, it was in it was five months ago, I think. And it was the patch where Bloodborne spells were introduced for the first time. Oh. So I never played before Bloodborne spells. And when I was going on to look at what are all the best decks, I was getting all sorts of results from the old Duelist forums, oh, which was yeah. when it was still two draw. Oh. And they weren't labeled as such, and I was getting really confused because I could see that these decks didn't fit with all of the standard practices that I've picked up for Magic the Gathering. Mm -hmm. But then some of them did when I was doing Google search, and as I was trying to work out, it took me quite a while to realize that there'd actually been a, t a stage at which the game was two draw. But I know what you mean about having trouble finding all sorts of deck lists. And that's part of what I want to fix with Turn on Mystic, the website, because what I ended up finding was on Reddit, there were two particular deck lists that I found I can only remember the name of one person, but I'll be referencing both when I start the website up. One of them was this really awesome Cassava deck that was built around Purgatos. Do you know Purgatos? Um, I do not believe so. He's Is a... It, yeah, you can bring it up. I'll mention it in the chat just for anyone who's listening to the video, of course. Um, four mana, three, four, oh. neutral minion. Mm -hmm. Whenever it... Is it when it deals damage? Yeah, whenever it yeah. deals damage. Uh, you randomly choose between healing your general for three and damaging the opponent's general for three. Three. And what happens is he was running a deck with three Spectral Revenant, because that's what Cassavid does. Yes. Three Purgatos as copies four through six of Spectral Revenant. And it was basically loading the deck up with so many sources of face damage while keeping a fairly strong mid-range body, uh, mid-range core to the deck. And what I found was that the way it was playing out, I was burning people down so much with the incremental damage from Purgatos and Spectral Revenant that I was actually finding that Spect's uh, old Shadow Nova, where the Shadow Creep damage was equal to the number of Shadow Creep you had, mm -hmm. wasn't as good as Spectral Revenant, because it only did four damage on turn seven instead of six damage from the Revenant. And I was kill killing people on seven with the Revenant. Wow, that's fantastic. And it was just all sorts of really cool deck decks. But that deck is still available on Reddit. Anyone who goes back and searches for it or filters it out by t typing in cat of the deck will be able to find it. But there's just, unless you know th that they're already there and you're looking for them, it's really, really hard to find them. And that's one of the things I want to fix in turn one Mystic because started off as just a place for me to host my content and then a place for me to host me and my friends content but i just want to turn it into an archive for all of these deck techs youtube guides all of the stuff that would normally either never get noticed in the first place on reddit or it would be lost a few weeks later and i just want to be able to bring all of the community content creators together and give them a place to post this stuff where it'll be preserved and then have all of the resources for new players so they can actually get into the game and not have the same problems that we did. Yeah, no, that's, uh, I'm super excited about that. Yeah, uh, because it's gonna be amazing. having, like, like, we just went over, and both having stories where we came back and had to dig up stuff, I think it'll be mm. great to just have a, a place you know you can go to, because, like, like, the Hearthstone yeah. community, they have Icy Veins and Hearthpone, but Duelist, it's oh, like yeah. you kind of just have to dig. Um, yeah. At least currently, but um, currently we'll fix that. Probably, I probably should before it gets too long. Uh, go ahead and end the video here. But I will say, just sense. as parting words, that I will have to talk to you about how to play Lionheart better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, because, uh, off, off recording, I think we can carry on with that. Oh yeah. In the future. For sure. Okay. Excellent. Uh, thank you all for watching again. Uh, Arden Dawn was my opponent for this match. And well, thank you for bringing me onto this channel. No, yeah, excellent. Thank you for for schooling me so that I can learn more. <laughs> All right, excellent. Uh, I'll see you. Everyone. Yes, definitely. I'll see you guys tomorrow.